Today on Ballistic Barbecue, I'm going to be cooking up some Asian-inspired baby back ribs on the pit barrel cooker. Let's get going. So before we get going with this cook, I just wanted to acknowledge Xmark. Xmark is a manufacturer of some of the top lawnmowers in the world, and I can say that. And for a few years now, I've been involved in their Backyard Life campaign. They have a site that's connected to their website that is everything outdoors. I mean, we've got fishing, hunting, cooking, DIY, hardscaping, landscaping. I'll have a link down below. You definitely need to check them out if you're into anything outdoors. Let's get going with this cook. So I'm gonna be cooking up these two beautiful, very, very, very meaty baby back ribs. And I said Asian inspired. Basically, we're reaching into China, Japan, and Korea with the ingredients in this cook. We're gonna start off with a binder for the ribs. And I'm using this oil, it's fried chili in oil. So this is not only going to act as a binder, but it's gonna ha have a layer of heat there. And this is Chinese. And here's what this looks like. So I'm focusing more on getting the oil on it. I'll let some of that chili get in there, but I'm using it as a binder. Again, I wanna get some heat in it, but you'll see with the flavors that we're going to be layering on, it's not going to be all about heat. I'm gonna, for every hot thing, I'm gonna kinda of temper it with a little sweet, a little savory, some acid. And I did peel the membrane off these ribs and gave them a nice trim. I you know, trimmed off just all the kind of hanging tags of meat. If you're new to barbecue, there are plenty of videos and pretty much all of my rib videos with the exception of this one, uh, I show how to pull the membrane off, but it's pretty easy. There's a lot of videos out there on doing it. And the reason we do that is, uh, I think it makes for a more tender bite, but also it allows for that smoke and uh, flavor penetration from your seasonings to get through on the back as well as you know on the top. Some people do not remove the membrane and that's perfectly acceptable. You know, there, if you leave it on, um, you'll get a crunch when you bite into them and some people really dig on that. And uh, again, do what you like to do. Now I'm going to kind of sort of make a very simple rub. I have here some togarashi. Togarashi is a Japanese seasoning blend. This has some really cool ingredients in here, including little bits of nori, which is seaweed, uh, little bits of bonito flakes. Bonito is a fish, but it's smoked, so you don't get any fishy flavor. It's just a nice kind of a smoky flavor. I mean, there's salts, different types of peppers, toasted sesame seed. It's just a really cool seasoning blend. And what I'm going to add to this, again, this is Japanese, some Chinese five spice. And I just personally really like this. It's got, um, you know, star anise in there and it just has a very unique flavor and a very unique, very, very, very recognizable smell. If you go into any of the, uh, like the Chinese um, little restaurants in like say, any of your Chinatowns that do those roasted ducks or the, the pigs, you'll, you'll smell this five spice in there. Just before I started the cameras, I lit up the pit barrel and it's starting to smoke on me here. So we're gonna start with the back of the ribs. And I'm not gonna worry about getting too much on the back. So there's not a lot of meat on the back anyway. I'm gonna focus more on the top of the ribs. All right, this is looking good. Now, because of that heat from the chili oil and the togarashi blend is it's more of kind of like that umami thing going on. Um, I'm going to sprinkle on a little bit of turbinado sugar. And I'm just going to use it, you know, on the top where the meat is. I'm not going to bother flipping the ribs for this. Just add a little bit of sweet. And I'm not going to go too crazy with the sugar. I just love using, you know, those kind of opposing flavors um, in barbecue. And I really love Asian flavors. So this is looking great. Now what I'm gonna do is add those hooks so we can hang these beautiful ribs. Just a couple bones down. There we go. Now I'm just going to allow the temp barrel to come up to temp and we'll get these ribs hung. It's gonna be awesome. 
pit barrel's up and running, and I'm going to add a few sticks of tan oak. And this is quickly turning into one of my favorite cooking woods. Now I'm going to just allow this barrel to do what the pit barrel does, and that's cook some killer ribs. Um, I don't know what temperature I am going to be running at because you just kind of set this and forget it. And I can honestly say I've never checked the temperature because I don't even want to know. <laughs> I'm kind of afraid to know what it is, but I do know that this is a foolproof uh, cooker. So what I'm going to do now is uh, just let it run, and I will be taking a peek at the ribs every once in a while. Uh, when I see they're getting close to being done, I'm going to apply a really nice glaze that we're going to make right now. Just like the seasoning on those ribs, the sauce, this glaze, we're going to be all over the place as far as the Asian influences. We'll kick this off with some plum sauce. This is Chinese dipping sauce. So this will be served with a lot of, like I say, fried wontons, you know, to dip your wontons in there. But it's really nice. It has that nice sweet kind of plum flavor, but it's not too, too sweet. Going to add some sake, and this is the brand I'm using. It's Masa Moon, and it's a Jinjo. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering both of these. But the thing that caught my eye on this, it's a dry sake, and it has notes of melon and, you know, other flavors that I thought would go really well with pork measured out here. Some soy sauce that'll add, you know, that salt, but it also has, you know, those fermented flavors in there, that umami. Some gojujang, this is a Korean fermented a chili paste, and I love this stuff. It's, uh, again, it's got that fermented flavor going on, but it also has, you know, some heat, a little bit of sweet, and this is really gonna make the sauce pop here. Some rice wine vinegar, just to kind of pump up the acid a little bit more. Some grated sweet onion. Some freshly grated ginger. Chopped fresh garlic. Toasted sesame seeds. Give us a whisk. And there we are. What I'm going to do now is get this on some heat. I'm gonna put it on my stove, uh, bring it up to a boil, then bring it down to a very low simmer just to get it reduced a little bit. Then we'll be done with the sauce. Two hours into this cooking, it's just time. To take a look at the ribs, see how they're doing. It smells really good. Here we are. Some beautiful color. Starting to get a little pullback here. So I'm going to check the ribs again in about probably 30 or 40 minutes. And what I'm looking for right now are signs that it's getting really close to being finished so I can apply that glaze because I want that glaze to be nice and set and sticky when I eat these ribs. So it's been 40 minutes. See, we got a gorgeous color. And definitely getting tender. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these and we're gonna sauce these up. Now all that wood underneath is on fire now. It's burning because we have allowed all this oxygen to enter the barrel. So whenever I pull anything from the pit barrel to sauce it or do whatever, just make sure you get that lid back on. We're just going to sauce front and back of both racks, obviously. Now I'm going to allow these ribs to hang in the pit for about 20 more minutes. I'll pull it, let them rest, and we'll try them out. Um, I can tell you the sauce, it's really, really good. It's um, 
got a little bit of a back burn. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It's, it's almost more on the savory side. Uh, if you wanted to pump the sweetness up, I would, you know, add a little bit of honey. But for me, uh, this is good stuff. I cannot wait to see how this tastes mixed in with, you know, the, the pork, but also all the seasonings on the pork. All right, it's been about 20 minutes or so. Turned around here. They look good. Nice. All right. I'm going to allow these ribs to rest a little bit. Just gonna drape a little foil over and take them in the kitchen, let them rest. Then I'll bring them out, slice them up, give you guys a try. And here we are. Just look at that. These smell amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and give these a try. Got a nice smoke ring there. So the glaze is set up exactly how I wanted it to, to set up. It's nice and sticky. See how this bites. Mm. This is good. Wow. So it is very savory and a little sweet. Mm. It is sticky. It's like sticking to my teeth, which I like, you know, the, the glaze. Um, it's got a very delayed and very short-lived backburn at the back of the throat. So I bite in as I'm eating it. Again, the, the initial flavor is that savory. Then all of a sudden, I'm getting this little, you know, sweet pop, kind of a sweet fruity pop. And then a little burn in the back of the throat that doesn't last very long, though. Mm. Yeah, this would be a good that sauce. Um, a good base for playing around and having some fun. Like I said, adjusting sweetness, adjusting heat. Um, I'll definitely do the chili oil as a binder again. Um, that, that was really good. I, and I don't know if that's what's creating that, that little delayed heat or if it's the goju jang or just a com combination of both. But my lips are not burning. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's the, uh, it's gotta be that oil that's doing that. But wow. I had fun here. This was a good cook. I'm excited. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Make sure you check out the X Marks Backyard Life link down below. Again, it's a resource for anybody who loves outdoor living. Um, keep the suggestions coming in. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell. Thumb it up if you like the video. I hope you did. I'll see you in the next video. I don't have anything to eat. Cheers.